Yes. Hey everybody and welcome finally to Draki Cup 10. Been a long time coming. I have not been casting for a long time, so I am I am excited to finally get back into it. So we're going to hop on into the first game here that was played in JC10, which is between myself and Cookies. Just seemed kind of thematic. I don't know. <laughs> but it's going to be Galaxy against Con F here. Uh, the map pick is going to be Torin Crater as well. Let me go ahead and open the info.txt. So, Cookies was actually one of the semi-finalists from the last tournament, which is the reason why he's in Group A here. And he's going to have the lower seed, though, because I did end up winning Jiraki Cup 9, of course. Uh, my faction that I picked first is Galzian, which is just my main. I figured that was safe. I also have the Mac pick, so I can do whatever I like here. And Cookie's going to pick Con F, then. So, I take the map to be Torin Crater, just because it's very large. I feel like I'm not going to get Blast Drone to death. And I can probably just play a kind of an eco game here. Again, this is the first game in the tournament. I didn't want to come in with anything too crazy. But uh, Cookies here is indeed going to go out with some early game aggression as he gets that Sanskrit Fabrication started. So it's going to be eco for me and some kind of an aggro from Cookies. Uh, if you haven't seen this map yet, I don't know what kind of rock you're living under. But uh, <laughs> obviously it's the same as Torrent Crater, only the spawns have been moved from here to here. From here to here. And that means that the map is a lot bigger, obviously, so the rush distance is... Uh, it was always pretty large in Torrent Crater, but even now it's going to be slightly bigger. But the big deal is that your main base is not right up next to these rocks here, which means that it is a lot easier to defend, so... Oh, and not only that, but of course, you know, you've got a base here, but if your opponent pushes you off of this, you can also transition to this one. So, generally, I think one of the weaker maps for early game aggro uh, tends to be a very strong air map just because of how big it is. Touring Crater was actually always that way, only it's difficult to get there because, you know, you die in the first five minutes, so... There's the wreck open for me. Ref mode is done. But I haven't gone too greedy here, so I am building sand skimmers already off this PC. And this is why you do that. Because now it's going to be 1 to 4 instead of, you know, 0 to like 8 or something. <laughs> uh, if, I, if I'm only starting sand skimmer fab now, it's going to be kind of a bad way for me. And we're going to scout it out here. This guy's probably forfeit. Maybe I actually could have just run him out that way and seen if I could buy a bit of time. But at least I see what's happening, so I'm going to bring the base back here. To answer this, I need kind of a lot of things. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming this will be a rail rush, but I don't know just yet. Uh, and indeed, Cookies doesn't seem to either. He's only just now clicked on it, so it's going to be rail rush. The Salvager here wants to die, I suppose. <laughs> Bit of bad micro for me. But I need a couple things here. I need a lot of skins to be able to fight against him, so a second PC is going to be important, and I need some kind of a tech as well. So those are the two things I'm going to build to, but in the meantime, I get power one because I feel like he does have enough skins. He could kind of dive under this carrier, so... Actually, didn't power up the carrier just yet. I might have been able to get a hit on one of these guys that way, but... Now, in the meantime, you can always just go back to one base when you're being rushed like this, but you can also try and use the carrier to sort of push your opponent out if you feel like he doesn't have too much of a threat of getting back onto that first base. So that's what I'm going to do here, and I do have Rail Fab on the way. And for Cookie, sense give a rating starting already, but he does have Rail Tech done now. carrier kind of fumbling around here like it does. <laughs> it's difficult always to keep it, you know, rotated the right direction, so you tend to see it kind of sliding back and forth there. Now the danger here, of course, is that Cookies is going to go around me, right? When I leave my carrier off the main base. If he tries to fight over here, I'm going to be happy with this, because he'll take a lot of damage that way, relatively. Damage one taking for him now, so he's definitely kind of investing into those upgrades now for the skins. And that's what I think he should do, but not until he gets a second PC out. I mean, maybe getting raiding is okay. This seems like an overcommit here. Definitely, like, having that second PC to where you can get more skins than your opponent. Because right now, like, I'm not trying to just match his skin production, because I feel like I need another PC before I can do that. But actually, I don't. I could just be building off of one and actually be kind of okay here. This is kind of what I was talking about, though. Now that I've moved the carry over here, you can sort of get behind me, but he's not going to commit in here. Now, this is 8 to uh, eight to 6, so not necessarily going to be a fight that he wins, but it could have been close there. I would have had to use some depth packs to kind of get my way out of that. I remember thinking in the game, they're like, oh, that was actually kind of close. I, I need to kind of <laughs> pay a bit more attention here.
Hey, it's Houston. So there's the production cruiser finally being built by me now. These are only assault railguns, so they do definitely uh, damage this carrier, but they're not going to be able to fight where there's a heavy railgun watching them. So I'm kind of okay with just tanking this damage for now. You can see I put the healing on. Uh, you're not supposed to tell me spoilers, man. You daft fool. Anyway, <laughs> since Camera Armor 1 coming out for me now, just so that I can try and survive against the skims and these soul rails, of course. Yeah, well, not only that, but you've just told, like, the entire audience. Freaking. Well, don't don't make it worse, cookies. <laughs> anyway, second PC coming out here. I actually need to be a bit careful, or I might, uh, I might teleport over this rock, but... Which technically is illegal, but obviously uh, we normally would say that was just an accident. Yeah, it looks like it didn't happen. Looks like though, at this time, Cookies does have another, uh, another? No, he's only got one. He does have a heavy railgun out now, so he can kind of try and fight against this railgun as well here. Carrier taking quite a bit of abuse here now. It's down about 4,000. But again, nothing has happened on the entire rest of the map here. You can see I've even had this scout here for a long time. I'm trying to see if there's blast drones or something like that. It's still, it's just one PC from Cookies here. And that's why he's got the money to keep building railguns like this. But that's kind of a bad thing in this sense. Oh, I remember this was kind of awkward. I'm trying to keep this PC safe here, but I kept getting shot over hills. I was, I was very nervous about it. See this? It doesn't look like it has a line of sight there, but... Well, seeing this PC is really low, I think I decided at this point I kind of just need to all in here. But, you know, amazingly, I've actually got more skims than my opponent by quite a lot now. Oh my gosh. This thing's like almost about to die here. There we go. Oh, trying not to get your carrier to the front. Yeah, that happens. But yeah, I'm worried that this PC is going to die, so I just decided, okay, I need to take this all in here. Right now it's 10 to 13, so it's not terribly good numbers for me, because he's got all these assault rails here, but... He does choose to give the ground a little bit, though. So, a bit of breathing room for me. I'm going to get back up onto two base. And at this point, it looks like Cookie's kind of deciding he needs to back out here. Uh, and obviously, you know, it should go without saying, if you need to back out, this is kind of bad times, because, um... Ref mode just now starting for him, but I'm up on two base. Soon to be three, actually, if I just move this PC over there, so... I'm happy with this. And I think part of the reason why I was able to take that trade is I do have armor 2 on these skins, but the big thing is just that I outnumbered him, right? Again, no no second PC here from Cookies, so... You need, you need to kind of leverage the fact that, like... You need to leverage the fact that, like, you didn't get ref mode and your opponent did, right? And that's kind of how you can start, uh really winning these rail rushes is to say, look, I can get my second PC a lot faster than you because you basically sunk, you know, 700 CUs into something that you're not even using. Is, isn't even more than It's 550, right? With 700 in vanilla. Pretty good trade for me here, by the way. Like, attempting sort of a rundown. I can't really finish it off, but obviously, killing all those railguns, definitely if you look at, like, the money in that trade, much more favorable to me. And now, as I said, I'm just going to try to explode up on a 3 base. But Cookies will do the same thing. He does have another PC finished here now, so... Looks like he's going to bring that carrier to the 3rd as well, so he brings the PC here and then there. The problem is, though, of course, who's going to be able to build the eco faster? It's clearly me, because he needs to deal with this threat right to his, uh, right to his base. Yeah, definitely. I, I think, actually, like... You use these assault railguns to kind of stall a little bit, and you get your second PC right then. That's usually how I've done it. Uh, A-game is often advised that you actually just, like, skip building railguns at all, you know? Just, uh, go straight into a PC. At either rate, that's definitely where the rail rush is weakest, I think, is when that first railgun is out, because you don't really have a very good fighting force yet. Oh, boy. Uh-oh. Uh-oh! Donk. <laughs> Pretty nice hit there. I remember I looked over here, uh, and I was like, what the heck? <laughs> like, oh yeah, it must be a cruise missile. <clears throat> you know, I didn't know that actually, Houston. <laughs> Lobbing missiles and insults. Excuse me. <clears throat> well, I think that's definitely a good strategy. Especially when you're behind, right? <laughs> little, little quick one for one there. 
I'm gonna actually start taking the air here now. I was thinking, uh, well, I could probably go honor guards here, but it just seemed like it'd be a bit more fun. This is kind of something you do to style on people, I guess I'll have to say. Like, if you know that you're this far ahead, you're like, yeah, you know, I'll just uh, come in with interceptors and kill, like, everything, you know, but... Oh, the stalker tape. Well, tell me you didn't die this time. <laughs> now that we've shown you the way. <clears throat> oh, but it was the last tape, so it just never showed up. Yeah, it's always funny when that happens. This is a bit catastrophic, by the way, here. Obviously, the uh, we, we both have rating at this point, but I'm just kind of... Find a winner to come in here. I don't want to push onto his carrier, of course, so this is where I'm going to take the trade instead. And I get both the Salagers. Looking back on it, if I just started on the PC, I might have just been able to kill it straight out, but... It kind of doesn't matter, because even still, I have... We have even numbers here. My upgrades are much better, so... Right now, I'll actually just be able to take this fight anyway. Here comes an Assault Railgun to try and make this a bit more even. But I can just leave at this point. I don't need to stay. So, I managed to get like four or five skins for nothing there. It's very nice. And it looks like Cookie's actually started to chase here as well. Yeah, but only with some of them. That was kind of that was kind of funky looking. Oh, tell me this doesn't donk me. It would have. <laughs> that was a good shot. <laughs> I almost just stood still and ate that one. Interceptor Fab on the way now. I have another PC as well building just so I can lock that carrier. And uh, like you saw before, I do have that first artifact picked up too. So. This is just kind of what I want to do to keep my opponent from getting back into the game. Honestly, I'll have a lot of win conditions at this point, because I can obviously win off of these artifacts. I can win off of the carrier push with rails, I can win off the air. There's a lot of things that I can do here. And there's just really no way that cookies can answer all of them unless I really misplay, so... This is certainly how you want this to go down. Carrier's starting to take a bit of fire now. I only have one heavy here, so it's not a huge threat to him, but... And of course, as we've seen recently, uh, Rail Rush and Conf can be difficult as well. I think that applies to the late game as well, if you only have like one or two. Because there's a large hit point pool that you need to get through, and all the meanwhile, he's just shooting missiles at your railguns, you know? Again, though, he's got no agency to move out across the map here, because if he leaves with these skins, I'll just kind of dive under the carrier. Although, maybe he's kind of calling the bluff right now, because, like, He's doing it, and I don't see, I don't have any vision, so he kind of gets away with this. And here's a moment I could choose to come in and just kind of ravage everything. I have a salt ship tech, actually, but it looks like I'm not going to do that, so... Uh, instead, I'm going to use the base putter heal to just kind of get these guys back up to full. Of course, they've been being hit by missiles this whole time, so that's why I do that. And it looks like I'll actually chase him back. Pretty big numbers difference here, it's like 10 more skims on this side than he has. Armor 1 starting to tech for him, so he's pretty close on the upgrades here, but still a big numbers advantage for me. I actually really ought to push this. Uh, it looks like I'm not aware of it, but yeah, this is a big vulnerability for him. Right now he's teching Honor Guards, I think that's a good choice. Because, you know, he needs to deal with skims and railguns, I think Honor Guards are just good against those units, but it's going to be a long time before he really manages to get those out. And by then, I might just be able to kill it with air as well. There's another artifact picked up for me. Three interceptors in the hangar now, the fourth on the way soon. And as you can see, very nice skimmer trade for me here as well. Pretty much just takes them all out. I mean, that's that's the huge thing about numbers advantage. It's now we end the fight. I still only lost like, I only lost like two or three. You know, <laughs> yeah, that's how the cookie crumbles. Whereas he lost like ten there. So Lancaster's law, man, it'll really get you. And at this point, I got all these interceptors. I'm like, wow, I've really just done all the damage like this. I mean, do I even use them? <laughs> um, which is often a state that you get into when you're really far ahead and you build air, but. Uh, Hey, you know, good problems to have, right? I'm gonna start building base runners instead then. I launched the interceptors as well. I think I'm looking to kill this PC, but, um... This is a little bit messy for me because I want the skims to be in there while I go after the PC just to, you know, finish off the kill. As it stands, I might just let this guy heal back up to full before I go in there, so... A little bit, uh... A little bit messy, but... He didn't see the signs! <laughs> he didn't notice the gradual creeping decay and dysfunction. 
Yeah, so here go the interceptors. But like, I'm gonna kind of panic and leave. I just kind of lost one. I think like one more volley, I'm gonna kill this thing. So I don't know. It's a little bit messy for me, but it provided a distraction, so I'm able to get a good, you know, fight over here on this flank. I've actually got EMP rounds on the heavy railguns too, so that's obviously an attempt to stop him from getting on me with skims, but I don't think it's really gonna matter now. Uh, and he's got that honor guard tech, but I don't really know how he builds one at this point. It's just gonna take too long and then, you know, air will kill it. Uh, so in the meantime, he's getting a bit of anti-air, which is good, that's what he needs. But, again, it's one of these situations he needs too many things. Um, it's not really a right choice for cookies at this point. This is also artifact point here, as you can see, so that's one, two, three. Gonna bring me up to five out of five. Uh, and if you didn't understand, at that point you win the game, you know, so... <laughs> Not to mention the carrier power it provides. It's pretty nice. Ow! <laughs> I'm just like sitting here and eating this missile barrage. That's okay though. <laughs> I mean, but the joke is that actually is okay. I mean, that's how far ahead I am right now. But very, very nice missile there by by Cookies. This Galaxian carrier is for sure beefy though. There's no debating that. And look at that, he actually does get that honor guard out in the end. I guess the question is, how does this end? Do I, uh, do I kill the carrier or do I get the artifacts out? I'm not really sure yet. First I'm gonna try and lose as many interceptors as possible. That's clearly the play here. Oh, it looks like, uh, Cookies is gonna... Jesus, surrender. I see, I see. Wants to get that one underground shot out. So yeah, once again, we see Galzian clearly OP. Stupid freaking faction. Should just be removed from the game. But that is game one for you. Let's jump into game two. Always a bit awkward to cast yourself, but I think it's going fine. And game two, as we can see, gonna be on College Teeth here. Let's check the pick bands. He picks Conef. Um... And I didn't really just want to play Galzian again, because, like, I could obviously do it, but... Uh, it seems a little boring, so I picked Coalition, just to kind of spice things up. And he's gonna grab Kalash Teeth, I think this is a great map for him. Uh, just because Conf is very, very strong in the late game on this map. Uh, and not to mention that, they also have... Uh, you know, they definitely have avenues to go in and do some, some cheese with, like, blast drones and whatever. So... That's kind of like an answer, I guess, to the Coalition going for like AV Rush, but this game it's just gonna be SC first. And I haven't quite been able to get this build as good as I had it before. I'm trying to do like two on our use and then quick drop one at 10. The idea is to have this at like 29, 25 at the earliest, but I'm only getting like 29, 20s. But it's pretty much okay, so I'm not gonna be too mad about this. Oh, actually, this one's pretty bad. That's like 17. But yeah, as for Cookies, it looks like this game he is going to go aggro once again. Always a little bit risky because he could run into AV Rush here, but he's just going to he's just gonna um, take that fight if it comes to him. Problem is, if Galzian goes, you know, ref mode, they also could run into an AV Rush, which is still very effective on this map, so... I can see the idea, you know, is just like, go for the aggro. This is usually how I would play Kosh Teeth as Galzian as well, to be honest. But it's tough. I feel like uh, the early game for this faction is just very difficult. However, do notice, he is doing something sneaky. And you know what, Cookies? I totally freaking agree. That's how I see it, too. Probe here is going to be denied just barely, so that's a nice pickup for uh, Cookies. Obviously, I want to see, is he going to go rails or is he going to go assault ships? Or is he going to go neither? Maybe this is just like a... Maybe it's just a feint and he has blast drones coming, right? So that's why I want to keep that probe alive. Obviously, it's seen some relevant information, but uh, I'd really love to have it down here. But right now, I can't really spare the expense. However, I know that it's uh, aggro, so I'm not going to build any salvagers off to that second base, right? I can just I can just build LAVs here, get that production upgrade. I'll be probably okay. Yeah, Houston, come on. Who who wears the pants in your household? You or your freaking cat, man. Anyway, I think we can all see what's going on here. 
<clears throat> Skim's building up on this flank, Blast Drone's on that flank, he wants to come in on both sides and just kind of crunch, you know? Still no tech for uh, cookies. But at this time, seeing nothing yet, I'm gonna kind of actually bring my guys up here and see if I can start moving up onto this next base. Clearly I had built like one salvager before I saw that, so... Well, Houston, that's where you use deadly force. Elbow destruction technique, you know? <laughs> a little bit of a chase down onto the skimmy here, but I can't quite find it. Still no tech for cookies. Obviously, he hasn't invested a lot of money into blast rounds, I think that's why. But at this time, he could go for assault ships or railguns. Looks like he's gonna pick the former. But he probably feels a bit of pressure now. He probably feels like his his window is kind of closing because obviously if he just lets me get this like unchallenged eco, he's going to be a little bit unhappy for it. But again, I kind of sense that this is going on. You can see I'm leaving guys over on this flank here. Because I want to see if these blast drones come up. I want to be ready for it, so. <laughs> Turret going to get set down here because I feel like he is posturing. Again, if he has like assault ships or something, I need something to help me like clear that out, and getting this cooldown started early means I can potentially sit down a second turret. I do see the BDs though. So I'm gonna come over here and challenge him with the LEVs. That one actually very close to getting a good hit, but he just doesn't quite have the damage. Second one only gets about half the health of this LEV. And the skims come in here, but they're not even gonna claim one salvager, because obviously this turret is gonna ward them off. So yeah, pretty good defense, if I do say so myself. And ref mode gonna be started for cookies now, but obviously I still have the chase down potential here. This PC is very much undefended. Uh, and he does have a Soul Chip Tech done, so he's gonna start... Oh my gosh, just scary. So he's gonna start uh, trying to build an Soul Chip to protect himself. But these LEVs are out for blood here. Obviously, you can see these sand skimmers not going to last too long. Uh, he wants to actually send those in right after the assault ship comes out because then the assault ship kind of tanks for them and they're able to get their damage out uncontested. But and as you can see, that first assault ship really does just melt too. And I was thinking at this time, like, okay, well, I could go for uh, I could go for like air at this point would be pretty strong. I could go for assault cruisers, whatever I want. But let's just try and finish him rightly and go for like a power push here because I feel like that's how far ahead I am. And I'm even going to stick around and try and claim this assault chip here because it lets me harass his eco for free. Uh, but he is going to swing this carry around to try and stop me. He has a uh, PC building as well. But yeah, it looks like I will have to back away with these LAVs now. And he will actually try and get an extraction out here. I think this is great for him because if he can get this out, then I'll have a little bit of carry power to contest. And he stops me from picking up this third, so... Actually, kind of a big deal, I'd say, for uh, for cookies. I didn't realize at the time, but I really want to fill out the RU guys here because it's going to be important as I take more power. But uh... what does timeout user do? Huh? Oh, oh yeah, you're a moderator. Well, yeah, don't <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> it basically like stops people from chatting. So I think. Power 3 on the way, as you can see. And I've got a probe here on the 3rd to make sure what's going on, but I also have one on the 2nd. I can see no PC there either, so he's still on one base right now. And I think he saw this carrier briefly. <gasps> you can be Burrito! <laughs> You're correct. <laughs> yeah, if anyone ever says anything bad about you, just like, delete every message that they send and mute them. <laughs> you have the power, Houston. <laughs> There's the RU selves, finally. Oh, he didn't see the carrier. Ah, oh, okay, that's actually kind of pretty relevant here, because he's not really going to have an idea what's going on just yet. Second extract comes out. But again, he's going to be feeling pretty sharp for picking up this artifact here, because otherwise this would be a third already. So that's really a good move when you're keeping that base runner to go for those artifacts when your opponent's army is on the other side of the map. See if you can get them out, because otherwise you're going to have to deal with even more carrier power. So Power 3 already done, though. You know, like the chocolate chip in a cookie, if it's not melted right, it can sometimes poke you. 
I don't know, man. <laughs> This probe here taking a bit of damage, actually. Oh my gosh. Never had that done to you? Well, consider yourself lucky, man. I'm scarred for life. I've even built another base runner. And honestly, the, uh, why? I, I don't really know. But it's there. <laughs> and I'm setting up some turrets here, too, so that he can't send the assault ships in. This basically means his army has to just stay in the base and I can just kind of come in and crush it with this carrier. Just kind of ensures that I'll get the artifacts out. There's power 4 started for me. And this is going to be a lot of carrier power to deal with. Again, Cookies, to deal with this, he really needs to have, like, railguns or kind of siege, I guess, but it's it's just tough. I mean, how could he have enough in this time? It's just a symptom of losing that PC early. You're always going to be behind here. And to be fair, this is actually kind of the worst map for this, because uh, obviously the carrier has to make this very long roundabout here, and the Coalition carrier speed is quite slow, as you can see. Uh, LAVs, by the way, just going to be committed to help stop this push by the assault ships here. And he may well kill that turret post, but I might be able to kill off all the uh, assault ships on the back end there. But here's that carrier. And apparently this is actually the first... No, 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 because Cookies saw it when he was in the midfield. Uh, but still, this is going to be a bit of a shock for uh, Cookies. I could be terribly easy to deal with this. Yeah, it's COP herder. <laughs> you know what I think about that. Yeah, these assault ships, obviously, they can't do much against this carrier, so they're just going to try and kill the SC. Right now, I think that this uh, kind of carrier wants to get out and try and, like, be far away. Yeah, you know, it was definitely the damage of the support cruiser that killed that assault ship. <laughs> definitely. What the heck? How did this guy get over here? Well, maybe he came from that side. But yeah, exactly. There, there isn't much running away to do. That, that's that's a good way to put it. <laughs> the thing is, like, the kind of carry wants to keep its distance and use those missiles, but uh, not really, not really much distance that he can that he can keep. Yes, climb atop me and meet your demise. <laughs> Eighteen plus carry reaction. I was telling a game. It's because like it kind of looks like it has arms. You know, it's just it's a bad image. <laughs> But either way, not much that, uh, not much that Cookies could really do here. You can see, actually, he's doing surprisingly well in this fight so far. That's because he's been able to do damage to me while I'm shooting at, like, his other stuff. Uh, and now that I got all these SCs on me, yeah, it's not, not really possible to do, like, net damage to me with how much carrier power he's got. But, um, for a moment, he's actually able to kind of win that fight, which is always a little funny. Looks like now he's splitting his fire onto these SCs, though. That's probably, like, the right move, technically, but, like, there is no right move here, right? It's kind of like the, that situation that we had before. So once again, the question is, do I win by artifacts or do I win by killing his carrier? And I believe it will be artifacts this time. This guy's almost here. Indeed. Yeah, man, I'm just saying, cookies will never die. Power 5 is even on the way. But yeah, there you go, that is the series then. Gonna be a 2 0 for me. Uh, oh my gosh, what the crap is this? Anyway, <laughs> anyway cookies fighting val uh, valiantly, but obviously, the cow always wins. Let me just put it this way, right? Like, you eat cookies with milk, right? And, you know, cows can make milk, so... He had no chance. He's all soggy and wet. Yeah, it's just it's not gonna go well. <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll catch you in the next one.